line plot. So here we go, page eight. There are four ways to graphically represent uh, data, okay? Before you start analyzing, find the MCTs, standard deviation, and range, okay? Uh, so we're, gonna, we're also always going to do that. Uh, that's an important metric. Those are metrics to have before you start. Line plot we have already covered. Frequency table. Uh, this is a requirement for the next two that follow. So a frequency table, and then you'll we'll do histogram and frequency polygon. Uh, so it's basically your bar graph and your frequency polygon is just connecting dots with straight lines. Okay, so you need this in order to come up with these two. The good news is that both of them can be done on the same grid. Okay, that's the good news there. So I'll just give you a quick uh, frequency table. You usually will have something like this. You'll have three columns like this, right? And you'll have an interval. You'll have the tally. And you'll have frequency. Okay, this may will probably right now it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's interval. So I just uh, will make a nice one later on. This interval tally and frequency. Okay? Just so you know what that means. And then <clears throat> line plot you've already covered, right? We have something like this with dots like that. You know that one bar and then bar graph you will just have something like this and you'll have a bunch of bars that usually touch right it looks something like this frequency polygon is more we're connecting dots right so Well, they're similar, but there's some distinct differences, okay? <clears throat> and I, I kind of review line plot again, but I think I always just throw it in right in the first section, but the steps are exactly the same as before, copy paste, okay? We're not gonna talk about line plot right now. Uh, frequency table though, if you have a highlighter, um, there's a few things here. You create a table with three columns, right? Interval, tally, and frequency. Use sorted L1 to enter data, okay? Uh, and I will walk you through it. Determine the number of intervals anywhere between Five and ten is ideal. Okay. The number of intervals can be chosen by you. Chosen by you. On an assessment, you'll be given, right? On an assessment, you'll be given the number of intervals. So you don't have to guess there because it's it's just more complicated to mark it if I if you guess or if you pick a number, I pick a different number. Okay. Calculate the interval width. You need to have that. Okay. You can round this number. Start with your interval column using the interval width. Use a low enough value to decide uh, to include the lowest value of the set. If value falls between two intervals, the lowest, place it in the lowest, right? So what is the you fall between two intervals, place it in the lowest, right? Because sometimes it'll be right in between. You just put it on the lower one and you'll be fine. Here's a frequency table for you, already set up. I already made this one for you. Let me 
just move this down a bit. So normally, guys, watch, uh, normally it looks like this. That is a frequency a table. But you should immediately, when you have an interval like that, find what we call the midpoint. This is also called, this is really what you're going to be doing is finding the average. That's really what you're going to be doing there. So, and I'll, I'll explain why this is important uh, then, Rose. So what you do is you, you basically go 100 plus 125. You add up the lower and the higher limit, right? Upper and lower limit. And then you divide it in half. Now, it's important to get this right. It's so, like I skip it sometimes not thinking. And students get this wrong. So if you go like this, you're going to get a wrong answer. Because that 2 is only dividing 125, correct? Like that's not, this is definitely not in between these two numbers, correct? This is how you should uh, watch out. So what I do is I, I figure out the top and then I divide by 2. So 112.5 112, 112 is the midpoint. It lies in between these two two limits right so this point is in between there so you do the same for all of them so this is 125 plus 154 even if I don't give you this little column that I just added here you go ahead and, and uh, add that column right so this is 137.5 okay keep going so 150 plus and after a while you see a pattern you should see a pattern. That's 162.5. You do the same thing, 175 plus 200. And the, these points are going to be very handy later on. It's 187. Very uh, interesting midpoints, but they are. that's just how you do it. You just figure this out. And um, when I collected, when I looked at my data and I, I looked at every number in that chart and I figured out where does that fall into, right? Is this, if it's like 101 centimeters, I would have made a little mark in here. So tally is as you're counting, you're putting them in the right category. So when you're said and done, you determined that there are three, what are we talking? Oh, trees, right? There are three trees that fall in, within these two heights. There are, do you remember, have you ever learned how to count this way? Right, when you do four and a line, this is a five, right? Five and three, this is eight. This is just three. And here you have five, ten, and another two, right? That's twelve. And uh, let's make a note so we can actually tell, right? 8 and 12 is 20 plus 6. That's 26 trees, right? So N is 26 trees. So this, this frequency table just put them all together and, and organized it. And these interval intervals will, can change. Like you can, could have picked, uh, you could have chosen to go up by 10 every time. In this case, look, we go up by 25, right? So that's what I mean with the width. The interval width is 25. I will say this. Right? In this particular case, the interval width is 25. That's very important to because sometimes students don't understand, like, what are you talking about interval width, right? In this particular case, it's 25, but it can vary greatly. It depends on the situation you're in. Let's keep going. Um, you know what? 
it's not very clear, but this is a frequency table. Okay. Frequency table. That is, I, I, I want that to be very clear that this, what we just dealt with is a frequency table. And this column in red is very often not there. It's not included so you, but I will give you enough space, hint, hint, I will give you enough space so that you can like just do that on the side. Right? So that's a bit of a hint there. Let's keep going. We're gonna use that frequency table. Just so you know, we're gonna make one, but I, I wanted to skip to this point at first. Use the frequency table to create a histogram or frequency polygon. This is the third option here, and this is the fourth option that I just talked about on the previous page. Interval is placed on the x-axis, frequency on the y-axis, very important. Look at two different, right? Interval goes on the x-axis, and frequency goes on the y-axis, always. It's actually not, it's actually very straightforward in that case. You're not starting, if you're not starting at zero, if you're not starting at zero, use a zipper. So this is what I mean by that, right? That's a zipper. Like, I don't know what else to call it, a zigzag, right? But like that, uh, that allows you to not start at zero. Okay. Uh, histogram create bars that touch and have the same width. Very important. Bars all have the same width. And frequency polygon, you basically connect the midpoints. It must start and end by touching the x axis. That's a key there. So if you want to get full marks, uh, watch out for the things I just highlighted. You can graph them both on the same plane. And we're going to do that. And I provided you a nice grid there. That's perfect. So what goes along the x-axis? And it's the interval. So this is actually the height of the trees, right? Height of trees in centimeters, right? And this is the frequency and what would that be in this case? I just, like we just talked about it here. It's, it's actually representing down here at the bottom, the number of trees, right? How often, like you're basically saying, hey, there are three trees that fell in between these two. So these numbers at the end represent, in this case, trees. It could be number of days. It could be various things, depending on the situation. So I will actually do frequency, but then put down number of trees. Those are kind of like the units in this case. So we got that figured out. For the frequency, just look at what's the biggest number that I have. Just look, you look at your frequency right there and you see 12, right? So if I went five, 10, that'll be enough, right? That'd be enough space. So I'll go five, I'll make that marking and this marking here. Please be very clear with where does the five go? Where does the 10 go? And I'm going up by one, right? So that's perfect. And then here, watch this. Um, gotta be careful. For my interval, it goes from 100 to 125. Like I basically start at 100 and then it goes up by 25. So what I'm gonna do here I am going to actually start with 100 here, and then this is going to be 125. And what's so my interval width I determined is 25, correct? So the next one would be 150. The next one would be 175. The next one would be 200. And can you, you can probably see that these bars will be the same width, all of them, right? They'll be 25 in my case. 
What's the problem right now if I left it like that? This is 100, but then the same distance is now all of a sudden 25. So that's a problem. This fixes it. This fixes the, this zipper tells you don't worry about what's here, right? Uh, we're going to start at 100, then 125. So it fixes the gap. Only in stats we do that, right? We don't do that with quadratics or anything like that. Because sometimes this goes to 10,000 right away, and then it goes up by 100. Uh, so you don't want, yeah, can you imagine? Like it would just be a weird graph. So we kind of zoom in to what we're interested in. So let me just backtrack before I'm going to start. This might confuse you. You go from 125 to 125. Then it's 125 again, right? But it's just saying you go from here to here, then you go from here to there, to there, to there, right? Like that's what it's really saying. If a tree happened to measure exactly 125, you're like, uh, go on the lowest every time. Like if you need to pick between these two, go to the lowest bracket, okay? Um, so let's graph this. So from 100, to 125 that bar is how many trees are in there three so you basically just right thanks to this nice grid we can actually just make our bar and I always like to put the number right above it and then the category from 125 to 150 you have eight right so you go all the way up to eight I prefer you use a ruler and when you're doing this for a test or a quiz. So, right, that's eight. And then from 150 to 175, if you look at that frequency table, back to three. And the bars are touching. But you could have a bar that is zero, right? You could have an interval where there's no tree falling in that category. That's fine. You just go kind of go along the x axis until you get to your next interval. Uh, so the next one is 12, right? So I'm going to go all the way up to 12. Make sure they touch because I know you've done bar graphs in other courses where they don't. And those graphs don't touch because they're not histograms. Those are graphs to represent like different categories, right? Like people voting for the NDP, PC, or, or the liberals, right? So that those are categories, those are not, but it's very important that the bars touch because it's their, their widths and we placed trees in these categories. So this one is 12. And that's your histogram right there, done. Frequency polygon is you're, co you're connecting the midpoints. So if you look at your bar, you can just make a dot right in the middle of every single bar. And we will connect them. Just so you know, though, um, this point right here along the x-axis would be, we calculated it, right? It's technically 112.5. But because we, we already sketched this to scale, we can just put the dot right in the middle and just assume that it's going to work out. The key is you need to connect it to the x-axis about the same distance. Almost pretend like this is the previous bar. So you just go down like that and connect all of the midpoints like this. And you need to touch, you need to touch, I don't care so much where it touches, like how far away, just make sure it does touch the x-axis. you got to close it in, okay? So I'll just, underneath here, um, I will just make sure we understand, right, this one. This is the histogram. And
is the uh, frequency polygon. You know what? Uh, I tell my students this. Let's say this question said, I just want you to do a frequency polygon. I tell my students it's okay to first just draw your histogram and then just connect the midpoints once you've done your histogram because it, it's almost easier uh, doing it that way. So I will not take off marks if you do both. Uh, sometimes I just ask for the histogram. If you then on top of that do the frequency polygon, I also won't take off marks because they're still accurate, right? But I will ask you sometimes what the difference is. You have to know the difference, right? How would you recognize a histogram? Well, those are bars that are touching and so forth. Okay. That's it. That's uh, the, the headache is not the graph. The headache is making the frequency polygon. Uh, sorry, frequency table. That is the headache, okay? But not really. You're champs. You're going to be just fine. Your, your smart cookies. So let's make one. And I will guide you. Okay. I will guide you. So let's go to page 10 here. And you have to practice this. It's not just going to work out if you watch me do it once. It's just not going to work. Okay. Um, the following data represents the flow rates of the Red River measured at the Red River Bridge between 1972 and 2001, measured in cubic meters per second. Uh, just so you know, right, that's cubic meters per second, right? Um, there. Uh, maybe I will put a, a title to this, right? Um, creating frequency tables okay and I did give you the steps earlier uh, so I'm going to try to do that calculate the MCTs and uh, SD the standard deviation and the range so let's type this in and figure out all of that jazz there right I would, I would say do that every time in this course. If you have data, boom, just figure out the MCTs, sort it, because there's a very high chance that you're going to need to do that anyways. Just take your time. So many numbers. But that is exactly why we need to interpret it. Because as it is, it, it's just a bunch of numbers. It's overwhelming. We don't know what to do with it, right? And I counted 30 on my last. I'm just going to check, right? 6 times 5, right? So there should be 30 entries. I'm going to make note of that. And the 30 means what? 30 collections, right? So that's happened over 30 years, right? So the 30 represents number of years. I'm going to go ahead and sort this thing right off the bat. Then I'm going to go ahead and calculate. And let's hope that I get this right. I have a bit of a problem. It doesn't quite match. The average matches my key. 
but the standard deviation doesn't. I don't know. I'm, I will wait for some of you to do it and see if we find a consensus. Here. The alternative is to go check every number. Anybody get something out other than this? Like especially for standard deviation? Or is this what we're getting? Did you get 951? Yeah? Jason? 951? Sadie, what were you getting? 951. Okay, so I need to check. Yikes. <clears throat> And I arranged it already, so now it's super, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Uh, what, what should I do? What should I do? Just redo it. So take a break, guys. And if you didn't get 951, then yeah, you need to check. Standard deviation should be uh, 951.49. So, That's what I get for rushing. Oh, and I, met, I, I there's an extra number in there. Is it Monday or what? Oh, there, 2339 typed in twice. Let's see if that changes things. There we go. Is that what we're getting? You enjoyed that, didn't you? Me sweating there, trying to figure it out. But that's what happens sometimes. Um, so let's write this down. So the average is 1551.77 and that's cubic meters per second okay um, the median i'll write that down median isn't quite always like we write it down but i really just like my mean and standard deviation down the road but it's asking us to do all that so we'll do it my mode, there is no mode, correct? I, there's not a single number that repeats. So you just don't say zero, just that there isn't one, not applicable. Um, the standard deviation, I'm going to figure that out. Uh, and that's 951.49. And that's also cubic meters per second. And the range would be greatest minus smallest, right? So we've got um, four, 4587 minus 159. So the range is 4,428 cubic meters per second. <clears throat> so these are my MCTs. Right. These are the measures of central tendency. 
This is the standard deviation, right? And this is my range. And the standard deviation and range are closely related, especially when you compare it to another uh, data set. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Create a frequency table using 9 to 10 intervals. Um, and so you decide, uh, I think I'm going to go with 10 in my example. So watch this. To figure out the width, <clears throat> remember the width of the bars, the interval width, this is what you use to do that. <clears throat> you take your range and you divide it by number of intervals. This is so small, the space here. Number of intervals, that's what you do to estimate it. So the width, in this case, is 4,428 divided by 10. 9 or 10, that was your choice. Um, I give you a bit of a choice, but I'm going to go with 10. And watch what I'm going to get. You already know, right? This is going to be 442.8. That's a terrible width to have, by the way. Anything like decimal, we want to stay away from that. And it's just to help you out a little bit. I'm going to round this to 500. 500? Could I have done 450, Mr. Dixon? Yeah, you could have done 450 if you had wanted to. Could you have done 400? Yes, you could have done 400. The only purpose of this is to help you out narrow down what a good width would be. Okay? Round it. Okay? You are allowed, totally allowed to manipulate, do whatever you want with that number that you get out of this formula. Okay? And it's in the steps as well. So, um, what's our smallest number in this set? 159, right? That was the smallest. So, in my case, what's what I'm going to do? I'm going to start from zero and go to 500. Is it that time already? Wow. Zero to 500. Then I'm going to go from 500 to 1,000. Let's at least fill this in. Then we're going to go from 1,000 to 1,500. So every bar goes up by 500 from the previous one. And then you go from uh, 2,000 to 2,500. I'm going to get you to do this for homework. So fill this in at least, OK? 3,000. How, how long do we do this, Mr. Dirksen? Well, you want to make sure that all of your data points are accounted for. Does that make sense, right? You want to have a slot for every point in your set. Will this do it if I go to 4,500? Eh, there's still one bigger, right? There's this one, 4,587. So I'm going to go one more, 4,500. 5,000. This is your homework, ladies and gentlemen. To go through this list, sort it in your calculator. Sort it, sort it, and then put it in here. Like, as you go along, you're like, oh, there's this 189 that goes in here. Oh, there's a 500. Oh, 500? Where would it go? It will go up here, right? So you kind of fill this in, and then you tell me how many fit in each category. And then you make this graph as well. That's the only thing you need to do for tomorrow. Okay? You need to be able to do this. All right, guys. And uh, then tomorrow I will expect more after we finish this example.